The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell. You have markets slightly in the red this morning as we kick things off quite the Friday, to say the least, man. Markets just missed 5,000 on the S&P futures by about a couple points before you dip lower into the close this morning. We're negative by about 14 points right now. That's about three-tenths percent in the red for the S&Ps. You're negative in the NASDAQ 100 by about 27 points, trading 17,705. That's about one-tenth percent in the red. You get the Dow off 114 points, 38,652. We missed 39,000 by just about 108 points on Friday. We're trading down 112 at 38,653 in the Dow. And the Russell, particularly volatile as usual. Check out the Russell. Talk about lagging, right? 1949 on the Russell. Even on the acceleration on Friday, didn't even get back to where you were before that jobs number on Friday, man. So you check out that dichotomy of what's going on in the indices. Bitcoin, back up 550 bucks, 43,735. You got crude. How about that one, right? 7151 this morning for the price of crude. Excuse me, for the price of crude. You talk about a pullback, man. You jump over to gold. Now, we got Chairman Powell up there last night on 60 Minutes. If you didn't check it, it's worth checking out, man. Interesting interview. We got the gold contract down $21 at 2032. I referenced that because we're going to get to yields. And what do we got for yields? Not sure what that's popping up. Uh, lower price, higher yield coming at you just like that, man, as everybody kind of adjusts to what's going on with the Fed. How about 4.12%? Just like that, man. 4.12%. Just like that as Treasury yields climbing once again on Chairman Powell's words. I reference Powell with the gold contract because anytime, folks, you're going to have what? We're going to have lower price and higher yield. What's that going to do to the dollar? It's going to put some strength in the dollar, man. The dollar, 104.36, and that's the reason why you're seeing some negative action in the gold contract this morning at 2032. What I will say is it's been quite a recoil. We're down two full points in the 10-year from where we were just on Thursday. Market getting a little bit a little bit ahead of itself as usual. And let's jump over to the headlines. So I was listening to this last night, actually driving around in the car. And I was listening to Bloomberg Radio, driving around in the car. And Bloomberg Radio, they had Asia Daybreak on, which is pretty cool. Um, breaking into the Asia session, of course. So I'm listening to that between about 6.30 and 7.00. And they start referencing that Powell's going to be on 60 Minutes. And I said, oh, that's cool. And then they got the transcript, I believe, probably right at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time when 60 Minutes began. I flip over, was able to put it on, and it was pretty cool uh, listening. And, yeah, strong words from the chairman uh, reiterating that a March interest rate cut is unlikely. You know, he didn't say too, anything too surprising as opposed to what he said on Wednesday at the press conference, right? Pretty interesting he decided to do this right on the heels of kind of a surprise, right? To put it lightly in terms of how adamant he was that they are not gonna be ready by March in his opinion. He left a little bit of room. I think the jobs number on Friday closed that door for the March opportunity, which is why you're seeing rates adjust this morning. And one thing I wanted to get to, so I pulled up his, let me find it for you. Here we go, I got it. Uh, sorry. Here we go. I pulled up his entire transcript, okay? And I wanted to focus on one thing that caught my ear when I was listening to it in particular, okay? And this is where his mind is at. And boy, we're not quite there yet, which is interesting, right? And so Scott Pelley, great interview. I like, love his interviews. He usually does a great job. He did a great job last night. What I loved about his, you should check out this interview, folks. Go find it. I believe 60 Minutes. I'll try and find it and post it in the den. Uh, Scott Pelley, his questions were so concise and so clear. And, you know, he is speaking to an audience on 60 Minutes that is not always financially literate as the audience out here, like you guys and girls listening right now. 
And I thought it was so great how he was so clear with a lot of his questions. But anyway, so he gets into it. Uh, you know, what's the danger of moving too late, right? They're talking about a recession, of course. And he mentions you disappointed a lot of people on Wednesday, okay? And what he was talking about, Powell was saying, we just want to get a little bit more confidence that it's coming down in a sustainable way toward our 2% goal. We've heard all this stuff before, right? But what I found interesting was this last part, okay? And this is what Powell says. Here's the quote. We're very focused on our jobs, you know? We're focused on the real economy and doing the right thing for the economy and for the American people over the medium and long term. And I can't overstate how important it is to restore price stability, by which I mean inflation is low and predictable and people don't have to think about it in their daily lives. That one, I was like, well, geez, we're not there, man, right? In their daily economic lives, inflation is just not something that you talk about. That's where we were for 20 years. We want to get back to that, and I think we're on a path to that. We just want to kind of make sure of it. Boy, when you put it in that context, right, predictable, not even that it's low, that in no way in your mind are you thinking that the price of those eggs, bread, milk, whatever it is, goes up in the next year, two years, three years. And so I, I found it interesting that, you know, and you look at it on that aspect and yeah, they're not quite there because there's no way everybody's that confident, man. And that's what they're afraid of, you know, and the data Friday shows the fears in there in terms of what wages growing up 0.6% on Friday, right? Now things can be volatile, especially in the month of January. Mm -hmm. We had some volatility a year ago in January, and things cool off in February. We'll see where we go from there. But nonetheless, strong words from the chairman last night. Found it interesting. He just kind of reiterated the case that he made on Wednesday, almost stronger so. And you're seeing the market react this morning with the 10-year trading to a price where we got a yield approaching 4.13%. Just like that, man. Pretty remarkable. Now, jumping down the yield curve a bit to take a look at before we jump around to what else we got going on. And we still got a big week of earnings, man. Last week was probably the main event of the week, weekly earnings in terms of all the big tech companies basically crushing it. Uh, but we got some more earnings coming down. But right now, taking a look, the two-year, back at 4.43. We're up by six basis points. You see, as we climb, right, the longer in duration you go, the higher you are. But boy, that two-year, man, pushing up by six points right now, six basis points, I should say. Strong move as the market adjusts their idea of where we're going to get some cuts. Now, one chart I want to take a look at. I thought I had it ready. Is this the one I thought it was? No, I got to find it. Here we go. Forgive me. Here's the one I want to get. So this is talking about recalibrating the rate cuts. Okay. Now, this is going to have to change in terms of where we are right now, man. This is only as of where we were on Friday. Okay. Right now, we're at five and a quarter to 5.5 percent, right? They put it at 5.5, the upper boundary line of where the Fed is. In October, the market was forecasting that in January of 2025, the Fed would only be at 4.6 percent. So that's like, what, three, three cuts, maybe four, because you're going from 4.5, uh, excuse me, 5.5. Gets ahead of itself in December where the market's pushing it at 3.7. Now it's back to where it's at 3.9, and that's probably back to about 4 percent by today, considering what's happening with yields. Just an absolute oscillation as the market tries to figure out what's going on. But hear those words from the chairman. And because that is not where society is right now. Um, inflation is low and predictable. Nobody talks about it. It's been that way for 20 years. We want it back there. And so we're not there just yet. So interesting to get that verbiage into the chairman's head. All right, folks, we got a lot to talk about. We'll talk about some of the companies with their numbers coming up this week when we come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. All the markets in the red. And what do we got? We got yields trading higher. We have the dollar trading higher. We have commodities a little bit lower on a strong dollar. And we have earnings coming in. And we kick things off with McDonald's. And what's going on with Mickey D's, man? Mickey D's down by six bucks. They get some weak numbers. Middle East causing some problems. But boy, this thing has been on quite a tear recently. Look at this channel line, man. Look at this channel line. I remember talking about this back in October, man. Just touched it. Look at this thing. Let's put it on a longer term basis. Look at this channel, folks. From 2015, McDonald's has been in a well-defined upward channel line. You take out the COVID volatility for two months there. Put this channel on. You're thinking about trading McDonald's, folks? I know to our man, Bud Rolfs. Love you, Bud. Bud, miss you, man. They don't get much better than this, folks. And it's really awesome when you're on a longer-term basis. So McDonald's, you're going to open at about 291. On this chart, that's where 291 is. Not that bad, right? Considering the run, the channel, where you are, still well within that channel line. Let's extend that to the right. Um, but yeah, you do dip to the bottom of that channel line. You're probably talking about, what, 260, something like that. You're trading at 290 right now. A little bit of weak numbers on McDonald's. The one thing that's kind of off here is the Middle East. Now, the Middle East represents 10% of their revenue. Pretty remarkable, right? Company like Mickey D's, Middle East, 10% of their revenue. And you have comp sales, okay, rising 3.4% in the period. Now, this is their same store sales, okay? A lot of these numbers were helped dramatically by inflation, of course, okay? But you have now a slowdown in the Middle East, and they had already talked about this. Um, yeah, expectations were lowered after the CEO warned earlier this year of a meaningful business impact in the Middle East. That segment accounts for 10% of McDonald's revenue, fell well short of estimates after the war broke out. The chain became one of the most prominent targets for boycotts in Muslim nations over its perceived stance on the conflict, as well as its status as one of the most recognizable American brands. Um, 
The company has repeatedly said its restaurants are run independently by local operators, but you can understand why that happens. Now, in the U.S., they even say higher prices. Okay, still, I wish they had told us how much those prices were up. Higher prices help drive comp sales growth 4.3%. So in the U.S., comp sales 4.3%, still, though, slightly below the average market estimate and about half of the previous quarter's rate. Don't get caught up in the previous quarters, folks. It's all about what the market's looking for. You're going to have some big numbers in the past because of inflation, especially when you look at some of those sales numbers going up. Um, international markets, similar story. Results were strong in the UK, Germany, Canada, but that was partly offset by decline in same-store sales in France. Yeah, the CEO says they're confident in the resilience of our business amid macro challenges that will persist in 2024. They expect to add 1,600 net stores around the world this year. Um, and yeah, they're a little bit lower. Let's see. Yeah, so nonetheless, tough morning for McDonald's as we kick off the earnings for them. They're a little bit lower this morning, and they're going to trade about 291. All right, let's check out what else we got going on. Let's check out the big boys from last week. Apple. I'm going to have to start that kicking things off with Microsoft, man. I always kick it off with Apple because they had been the biggest company in the world. But not anymore. You jump over to Microsoft, $3.05 trillion for that company. You jump over to Apple shares, and Microsoft is basically flat on the open this morning. You have Apple shares up a bit this morning, 187.60. And they are sitting at 2.896, only about $150 billion behind Microsoft shares. You jump over to Google shares. Let's see where they're at. They're at about $2 trillion, aren't they? $1.8 trillion for Google. Google shares up a little bit this morning. You jump over to Tesla. Interesting article out there from the journal that hit Saturday night. Uh, have to chuckle. Boy, the, the story. Now, um, I'm going to talk about this story. I'll have to get it up. I, I will find this story, folks, and it's it talks about whether it's drugs and sex parties and Elon, but what it really combines is, which is most pertinent for the market, okay, because I really, really don't care if Elon's going and he's smoking a joint or he's doing ketamine or he's doing ecstasy at a party. I understand the, the governance aspect of things, okay? But that one is not really as tantalizing to me. If he's doing his job, whatever you're doing outside of your job, if it really doesn't have an impact, I really don't care. Um, if you're not hurting somebody, especially, right, if there's no victim in what's going on, now you could say that if he's on drugs, right, there's victims to the shareholders, understandable. But the beautiful part of the article was just the lack of independence for the board members, okay? And this is a Wall Street Journal article, and I'll find it when we come back after the break. And uh, one of those members is Rupert Murdoch's son. Um, I think it was Lachlan um, that's a board member there. So not exactly a big liberal slant on you know, Elon out there, and he's out on Twitter tweeting his normal stuff, talking about immigration, and listen, that's a real deal that's facing the country right now, but he's trying to create a distraction, folks, because, boy, it just keeps piling on. So that was the story over the weekend out there, and I'm not sure it's going to matter just yet, but, boy, it's pretty tantalizing. Some of the details, I'll get that, and I'll post that in the den as well. Yeah. All right, what else we got pulled up? How about a little China? As I said, I was listening to Asia Daybreak last night, 6 o'clock in the car on Bloomberg before Powell started about 7 o'clock. And China, they're trying. They're trying everything they can, man. China tightens some trading restrictions for domestic and offshore investors. Quants are barred from cutting positions in levered, leverage strategy. You got a bunch of rules out here, but boy, I'm not sure it's going to fix the underlying problems. I was listening to that Asia Daybreak last night, some great analysts out there. And they were just making the case, and forgive me, I forget their names. And it was a, it was a, it was a great conversation. And they were just talking about, listen, they need less regulation. They were talking about, you know, the GDP growth over the last 20 years. They were talking about um, the revenue growth of the companies, the profits. And meanwhile, then what are they talking about? They're talking about the share price growth over the last 20 years, not even close to where. And I'm going to pull up the Hang Sang. No, nah, that's not it. There we go. HSI Hong Kong. And this is what they're talking about. Ah, that only goes back to 2015? Come on, really? All right. I'll have to find the, the next one. 
Yeah, Hank's saying in the X. ADR, maybe? Yeah, there you go. Okay, there's the ADR. Um, and this is what they're talking about. You go back 20 years and this thing's flat, man. Right? Doesn't quite make sense. And what do they need? They need less regulation, period. End of story. Uh, great analyst out there. Again, not familiar, but it was somebody in the Asia Pacific, of course. It was Asia Daybreak on Bloomberg. You got to look at this market, folks, okay? You don't got to. But I understand why people are looking at this market, right? You look at stocks like Alibaba, okay? You go back to where you were trading at almost 10 years ago. You're down from 319 to 71.85. You're down in Alibaba from 121. You talk about a dead cat bounce, man, right? Dead cat bounce up to 121. You're back to 71.85. Be careful because the way they were framing it last night, and I like the argument, was how long can the bid last in this market if this is all that China is doing without fixing the underlying problems that exist, which a lot of it have to do with the increased regulation that's occurred from Beijing. Uh, and they're trying every single day we get new headlines, but guess what? Look at Alibaba, it's fairly flat, right? You put it on a 10 day, 30 minute, it's chopping around, man. Basically right near lows that we are at from 10 years ago. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the S&Ps down by 12, NASDAQ off by 19, Dow off 95, Russell off by 23. We're coming back for the market open. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&Ps down just nine points. Markets catch a little bit of a lift there coming into the opening bell. Still in negative territory, off by nine. You get the NASDAQ 100 off by 11 right now. What keeps happening? Do I keep hitting on? And you got the Dow off by 88 right now. And you got the Russell with continued weakness down 21. The Russell off by 1.1%. Let's jump over to yields. As the market opens, continued lower price, continued higher yield right now. We get the 10-year approaching a 4.15% yield. That's putting fuel into the dollar index, 104.37. And that, of course, is making things very difficult for the gold contract. But if you like gold at 2070, you're going to love it at 2033. I kid to some degree, folks. But it is only a matter of time that the Fed will be cutting. One of the things that the chairman said as well is that everybody basically agrees of the 19 members that are in that room of the FOMC, that it will be appropriate to cut this year. Now, that doesn't tell you too much. It's February 5th, folks, okay? Cut this year, that could mean anything. But they're coming. And when they come, you are going to have yields pull back from where we are. Again, we're setting up where you're gonna have opportunity. I mean, the thing that was remarkable here is that, where was the room when we came into that Fed meeting on Thursday, okay? Uh, excuse me, Wednesday for the market to really recalibrate. Anyway, we, we get the point. Rates are rates are up a bit, 4.15, but eventually that's gonna meander a bit. And yeah, that should help out the gold contract when eventually that dollar gets a little weakness, but it's not happening just yet with the dollar at 104.38 right now. All right, let's see what else we got pulled up. Yeah, this one's an interesting one, man. Talking about from Bloomberg, why New York City apartment buildings are on sale 50% off. Tougher rent control. Returning worldwide destroys $75 billion in property value. Cash-strapped tenants cheer as they maintain a foothold in the city. Pretty remarkable, right? Um, now, you have an instance here. You're talking about a 21-unit building he bought in 2018 for $4.8 million. Specializes in a subgenre of real estate investment. Property subject to rent regulation, the oldest and biggest program in America. For this well-suited apartment on 164th Street, the quickly gentrifying Dominican enclave immortalized in a Lin-Manuel Miranda musical, he can charge no more than six fifty a month, perhaps a quarter of the market rate, right? Now, for landlords, the playbook had, been lo had long been simple and lucrative. Buy rundown buildings that are rent stabilized, fix them up, pass along the expense to tenants by raising rents, which was allowed under the regulation, cash out, repeat, once rent approached 8 2800 a month, owners could charge what the market would bear, and the apartments became a potential gold mine. You just had to be patient. But guess what? This bet on raising rates has gone disastrously, excuse me, raising rents, not rates, uh, as it has for landlords. In 2019, yeah, not exactly the case. New York state lawmakers rewrote the rules. The rules have changed. In one key change, they sharply reduced how much landlords could raise rents after renovations. This one I don't understand, folks, okay? There is a great case to be made about subsidizing housing, okay? But the government should be subsidizing that housing, not individual landlords. There's, that's, that's you know, it's that's, that's the case on this, and uh, New York City landlords are getting hit because that one little change, and it's not a little change, man. Uh, how about buying more than 40 properties for 300 million over 20 years is now in distress? Yeah, I would bet, man, he's in a big problem. The whole business plan just changed. Um, New York buildings with at least one rent stabilized apartment sold on average for 203,000 a unit down 34% since 2019. And that's gonna hurt the people that are in those buildings, obviously, right? So nonetheless, an interesting one out there on Bloomberg if you wanna check it out. All right, we got to talk about Boeing, man. It just doesn't stop. Boeing finds more misdrilled holes on the 737 in the latest setback. You'd think that these things would be checked somehow. Reworking fuselage, fuselage part from Spirit Arrow may delay deliveries. Again, the plane maker says 50 undelivered planes found with faulty rivets. Would they have been found if the other planes weren't having problems? I don't know. They found more mistakes with holes drilled a setback that could further slow deliveries on a critical program already restricted by regulators. It originated with a supplier and will require a rework in about 50 planes that have not been delivered yet to repair the faulty rivet holes. Yeah. Well, he didn't identify the contractor, said it's aware of the issue 
and will conduct repairs. I don't know, man. It becomes tougher and tougher to tell the story of a buy here for Boeing. And there's your dip, down by 2.5% right now to 203.85. Decent numbers on Wednesday when they come out with their numbers. But be careful of dead cap bounces because you've almost given it all back right now. On a longer-term picture, I mean, 200 is a critical area in this, and you're at 204 right now. You trade below 200, you're probably on your way back to 150, man. Which is remarkable for this company, how it just keeps... I mean, we're at, we're at the stage here that people are very much going to start caring about which, air, which airplane they're on for safety issues, which has never been in, in, in a thing in existence. And that's the last thing you want, man. Uh, in the latest instance, a worker at a Boeing supplier flagged that two holes in the plane's fuselage may not exactly meet specs. The problem is not an immediate flight safety issue, and all 737s can continue operating safely. Many employees have expressed frustration at how unfinished work, either by suppliers or in Boeing factories, can ripple through air aircraft production lines. Yeah, it just doesn't stop. They got a big problem, man. And when it comes to making planes that are flying people all around the globe, you, you can't just be making things that aren't working, to put it lightly, right? Pretty remarkable how that's happening. Okay, let's get into some of the companies with numbers this week. As we talked about, huge week for the tech companies. Last week, you already got McDonald's out with their numbers. Let's see how Mickey D's is trading on the open. Look at this. You, oh, I thought it was, no, we're not flat. I thought they had got it back. No, down by $2, down by 2.7%. Pretty much where you were coming into the opening bell, off by $8.35. And remember, if you weren't checking out the program, put that channel line on your chart if you're trading McDonald's, man, because you've been in it since the end of 2015. Doesn't get much better than that. All right, what else do we have this week going on? Well, let's see. Yeah, Tyson out with their numbers already. Looks like the chicken business is going well. We're up by 7.8% this morning for Tyson out with their numbers. Palantir, maybe they're out after the bell. Caterpillar, they're out with their numbers, up by 5.1%, not bad. What else do we got? Estee Lauder, they're out with their numbers. Not bad, up by 15.8% for Estee Lauder. There you go. All right, we jump into Tuesday. So Tuesday, we get Amgen out with their numbers. Amgen, little volatility this morning, sitting at 322. We get Chipotle Mexican Grill out with their numbers. Man, this thing, check it out, 2,500 on the dot, basically. You talk about an acceleration. Now, they're going to have sky-high expectations, man. Last earnings, you were at 1788. What did we just trade up? $700? What is that percentage-wise? Man, that's bonkers. Yeah, 700 divided by almost 1,800. You're up 40% since their last earnings. Whew. Expectations going to be sky high for Chipotle on Tuesday with their numbers. We also get Spotify on Tuesday with their numbers. Look at that run that thing's on. 221 sitting Spotify. We get Snapchat. We get Toyota on Tuesday. If you come back Wednesday, we're going to get Disney, Uber, Roblox, PayPal, Paycom, excuse me, Mattel. We'll finish this up, folks. We'll go over the earnings we got coming up this week when we get right back. Don't go away. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, 
get some advice from the experts, you might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off by 15 right now. You get a little bit of an acceleration in the Dow to negative prices. S&Ps off by 15. Let's put it back on that 15-minute, uh, five-minute chart. You see the Dow drop off there by about 100 points on the open, 38,576. How about the Russell off by 1.5%? Tech stocks holding up relatively well, only down by two-tenths percent. You get the S&Ps off by three-tenths. Let's jump around to some of those FANG stocks. Apple shares down about one-tenth percent right now. You jump over to Microsoft. They get a little bit of a dip on the open to 409. You're down by half a percent. You jump over to Google shares. There's a lift for you to Google, up by 1.3% for Google. We jump over to Meta shares. They give back some of that Friday acceleration. Biggest day ever. Pretty remarkable. Meta down by 2.3%, but you're sitting at 463. You came into their earnings event Thursday night at what? 390, I think. Yeah, 394, something like that. Pretty remarkable for Meta shares. 463. And you jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares off by 2.6% as the pain continues over there for Tesla. Okay, jumping back to the earnings. So as I mentioned, we were kind of on Tuesday slash Wednesday. I mentioned we get Chipotle on Tuesday. That'll be a big one out there. You get Snapchat on Tuesday. They're gonna have some lofty expectations with what Meta was doing. Let's take a look at Snapchat. Yeah. Now we saw Meta dip a little bit lower and you got Snapchat dipping a little bit lower, but look at the expectations, okay? Snapchat was trading at 15.85 before Facebook earnings. They're a full dollar higher to 16.75 after being at 17.59. Not all social media companies are created equal, folks, okay? Facebook is making all-time highs. Snapchat is down from 83 to 16. Be careful for Snapchat shares. All social media companies are not Mark Zuckerberg's company, that's for sure, and Snapchat is definitely not one of them as well. Tuesday, we get Toyota, TM, out with their numbers as well. Look at that run the last year, from about 130 up to 202. We shift to Wednesday. Now, we talked about Chinese equities. Baba will be out with numbers on Wednesday. You get CVS out with their numbers on Wednesday as well, trading at 72.65 for CVS. We get Mattel out with their numbers on Wednesday. Mattel well off the highs of 2022, sitting at 1847. We also get PayPal. We get PayPal, man. These these pay companies, man. 6181 for PayPal shares. We get Roblox with their numbers on Wednesday as well. I'll tell you, the kids in my house, they like Roblox, man. They like Roblox. They got me playing it occasionally. Pretty interesting. Uh, well off of that spike high to 141. You're sitting at 39.80, and yeah, you've just been chopping around for almost two years, all the way back to February of 2022. 
in this consolidation between about 25 bucks and maybe 50 on the upper boundary. You're sitting at 39. They'll be out with their numbers. And then two of the bigger companies that will get talked about this week on Wednesday, you got Uber out with their numbers. Boy, this thing's been on a tear, huh? So much for that channel line, man. You can see how. Let's activate this, though. Maybe you line it up to the tops. Not exactly perfect, but you can see it kind of accelerates above it, breaks back. You push higher. This thing's up from 40 bucks to 68.61 for Uber. They're going to have some high expectations when they're out with their numbers Wednesday after the bell. And then you have Disney catching a little bit of a bid. But they got some turnaround stories still to spin out there. Disney out with their numbers on Wednesday as well, chopping around at $96 for Disney. Hasn't been around since above 100 since May of last year. And we have Wynn Resorts on the China story as well. They'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday. You shift to Thursday, Expedia, Pinterest, Spirit, and Take-Two Interactive. Some of the equities that jump out for Thursday numbers, you jump over to Expedia, Quite a resurgent from their last earnings. This is where, man, you're going to have some expectations, right? From 94 to 150 over the last 90 days for Expedia. Some of this acceleration in the market is just wild, man, since October lows in this market. So you got Expedia Thursday. We talked about Pinterest. We'll be out, excuse me, with their numbers on Thursday as well, sitting at 39 bucks. Kind of a nice trajectory off the lows of 2022. You were hitting 20 bucks. Early last year, you were sitting at an October low of about 25. You're sitting at 40 now. As I mentioned, the percentage is just wild. You jump over to Spirit Air. Interesting to see what they're going to have to say about the JetBlue deal on their numbers on Thursday. And then we round it out with Take-Two Interactive as they'll be out with their numbers on Thursday as well. And we got a possible A to B, C to D sitting up right here. We got it from about 100 right up to a B point of potentially about just over 150 to so call it about a $50 A to B a little bit more than that you pull back to 130 that would be about 180 maybe just over 180 would complete that A to B C to D and look at the volume we had in December man on that December 11th acceleration now look at the Nasdaq 100 only down 22 points we're getting close to these A to B C to D expansions Absolutely remarkable on a percentage basis, man. You look at these tech stocks, 14.2 to 17.7. You add 3,500 points to a 14.2 index. Yeah. Yeah. 25%. 25% the NASDAQ 100 is up since October. So be careful, folks, um, to put it lightly in this, in this market right now with a little bit of exuberance, to put it lightly, to say the least, right? What I will say, so what I, the Wall Street Journal, right, for some reason I'm having problems pulling this up. I don't know what's going on right now. It's not recognizing my subscription for some reason. It keeps trying to get me to sign back up even though I'm signed back up. Um, so I'll fix that. But for those out there, if, you, if you're interested in a Wall Street Journal subscription, folks, I'll tell you, the way to do it, okay, is they charge a dollar a week. So you pay four bucks a month for a year. And then they try and bump you up to... 38.95 a month but all you gotta do is cancel and then resubscribe again and they kick you right back into four bucks a month for the year it's a great deal for the journal um when i did it about a year just over a year ago what happened is my subscription just expired so that's all i do man i cancel it right sign it back up and pay my four bucks a month for the year until they want to can until they start charging me 38 bucks a month again then i cancel it sign backs up back up four dollars a month their uh their promo rate is a dollar a week for a year, that's what they push out. 52 bucks, folks, for the journal, for the digital version for the year, outstanding value out there, without a doubt. Uh, so check that out. But this morning, they're giving me some problems, man. I wanted to go through that Elon article. I'm gonna take one more look at it, if I can pull it up after the break, because as I mentioned, uh, they talk about drugs in there, they talk about he's got a prescription for ketamine. Listen, we all, we've all heard the stories, right? San Francisco, Silicon Valley, the tech um, scene out there, yeah. You might got some drug parties, man. You got you got whatever you got, right? But it's the intertwined nature of so-called independent board members. And here's the last part of this conversation, okay? Because when you talk to people about this, Elon is a divisive figure because right now he's in everything, 
okay? And politics is somehow merged with everything. So he's divisive, people love him, they hate him, whatever it is, brilliant businessman, one of the most visionary minds of our generation. You think about it, he's changed electric vehicles, right? He's changed um, private space frontier, SpaceX, all this stuff, okay? But the deal is when you go to the public for money, you have to follow the rules, okay? This isn't about being a businessman or a businesswoman. When you go to the public for money and you do so willingly with the rules that are in place, then you need to follow them. One of those rules, okay, in the NASDAQ, and this is because of Sarbanes-Oxley, and I think this is in the journal article that I was reading this, you have to have a majority of independent advisors, uh, board members. And that was because Enron had a big problem because the board members weren't independent. You have to, it's a NASDAQ regulation. You have to have a majority independent board members. And that is just not happening at Tesla right now. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. S&P's off by 14. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now off by about 12 points. One of the other equities I didn't get to, we got Pepsi out with their numbers on Friday. Okay, went through the numbers this week. Pepsi, Pepsi Cola, they'll be out with their numbers on Friday, trading at about 171. We jumped back to Tesla. I did get that article figured out. Off by 2.8% this morning. 
And you jump over to the story, and there's the headline, man. The money and drugs that tie Elon Musk to some Tesla directors. Now, what's what the kicker is, man, is that this is the journal owned by Rupert Murdoch, right? And who are they talking about? One of them they're talking about, not Lachlan, sorry, Lachlan, James, James Murdoch. He's on the board uh, out there as well. And the relationships that exist probably make them non-independent, okay? But the one I'm just going to get to right here is, now, pretty tantalizing details in here. They talk about, if you're ever looking for some drug-fueled parties, folks, they pick a hotel in Mexico for you. Um, <laughs> what are they talking about? Yeah, this is the hotel here. The Hotel El Ganzo in San Jose del Cabo, Mexico. Um, that's supposedly where they're meeting up. But this is the part I wanted to get you right here, talking about the board members and what they've made, man. Hundreds of millions of dollars. It is a quid pro quo relationship going on, folks. They are getting rewarded. They're friends, acquaintances, frame it what you are. And that's the reason why Elon didn't get his pay package. If he had straight out independent board members out there, it would have probably been very difficult. Reading a little bit more about how that came down this weekend. At first, I said to my friends, you know, what's the deal, man? It's it's illegal now to pay a CEO, you know, whatever you want to pay them. Well, it is if you don't do it in a fair way. And that was not done in a fair way when you look at those board members, especially when you consider the rules and regulations to be a publicly traded company on the indices like the NASDAQ. Um, for instance, an Alphabet board member, the total board members hold stock valued at $8 million. Yeah. And received an average annual compensation of 475000 over almost the last 10 years. Compare that to you're talking about $200 million, $400 million unexercised options, $200 million, $300 million. James Murdoch, he's above $300 million. His brother, Kimball Musk, it's a big number out there, folks. Be careful on Tesla. There's a lot going on, and not much of it is good right now. Folks, thanks for kicking your Monday off right here at TFNN. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman's in the den. He's ready coming up next. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll see you tomorrow at 9.